the scene is set for New York by night. Monty is in the park with some of the Garou. Arcady previously asked him to teach the new Bonor Ifrit a bit about being a Garou, despite the fact he's a kinfolk, despite the fact he's not actually a kinfolk at all. Um, Monty is sitting there with his um, discern running, gambling one conviction. And that's, yeah, that's a look success. So he already recognizes, just in case somebody ends up asking to come into the scene or something, Monty can pick him up. Um, Eric Cronenberg is also there, likely trying to teach the, uh, the young Cobb a bit about uh, what he needs to know. So, um, if I, what, have you been, what have you been told broadly about so far? Weaver bad. Worm, bad. Chill things. Ah, there's nuances there. Worm is definitely bad. How are I'm paraphrasing to... from uh, Spotlight, yeah. by the way. Yeah, the... Oh, from Spotlight. Yeah, that Spotlight, figures. every tribe has their own views on things, and they have different views. If you were talking to a glasswalker, they're not probably not going to be as negative a viewpoint on the weaver. The smart ones will still warn you to be careful. <laughs> Yes. Now, that said, I'm sure the Black Spirals, they're the ones who fall into the worm. I'm sure they've got their viewpoints, but they're bad people. So, um, call it, basically, if you run across a Black Spiral dancer, they'll often have um, spirals, not always black, but they'll have them carved into their flesh half the time. If you run into any of them, call for backup. Um, Is that why some of the werewolves don't go up spiral staircases? Maybe. I can't say I've run into that particular superstition myself. Going down, I could see, but going up should be fine. Yep. Is that a symbolic problem, or uh, just, just say it, a bit of? Uh, honestly, it's it's a it's about the same thing as you know crossing yourself. Honestly. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you've got the. Every every one of the tribes have a different viewpoint. I've heard someone talk about them, and not all the tribes get along. Um, <laughs> the Bonars, I'll put it bluntly, I've heard different tribes talking about them. The Bonars aren't necessarily the most respected tribe, but I haven't heard of anyone who hates the Bonars. No. Nice um, middle ground. Do you know anything about the way that wolves... Act in captivity. They slowly die. Well, so do most things in captivity, but they've only found this when they've put wolves into you know, into zoos and such. That they form, uh, you know, an alpha, beta, and omega situation. In the wild, they don't actually do this. But since we're not exactly wolves, we tend to have an alpha, a beta, and an omega. The, you know, as far as all the tribes go, the Bonars are basically the Omegas of the entire nation. This Is that uh, why our totems are at? I think it's because your totems are at. It's it's a it's a you know chicken or the egg situation. The tribes have existed. Most of them that I know of have existed for thousands of years, or hundreds at least. Um, oh, thousands. <laughs> and tribes do change their names, some of them for different reasons. Um, for example, the Black Sparrows weren't always known as that. They were known by a different name. Yeah, well, that was before they fell. Yeah. Um, but I doubt if we go back far enough, the Glasswalkers are always called Glasswalkers, as in, they're oh. going to... Pre if the tribe existed back then, they're going to... then. Glass wasn't the they they they, they did ex they've existed. Each of the tribes, at least as I was told, uh, descends from one of six of the sixteen original werewolves. Mm -hmm. um, the Glasswalkers, I believe, their original tribe name was Warders of Men. Okay. Uh, you know, this is random bits of. Stuff that may not even be pertinent anymore. Uh, most of the other tribes had more or less the same name they have now. Yeah. Now, the thing as well is, 
despite the fact that the tribes have some kind of hierarchy, there's the hierarchy of the sept and the pack as well, from what I've seen. And when I first came here, I met a Tierj, and she was the uh, she was the alpha of the sept. She was the leader, but she was a bonor. So even if your tribe isn't the highest in station, you through proving yourself, you can you can achieve higher station. I heard that um, this is like the this not park. What, what how do you say this? Um, sept, sept is a bonar sept. Originally, it was. It's kind of become a hodgepodge of various different tribes. Uh, the current alpha, for instance, is a glasswalker. Here, I'll um, Matty kind of stands up here. I'll show you some. We can talk as we uh, as we walk. He starts heading towards the trees. How how do glasswalkers get along with bonors if rats supposed to break the weaver's web? Um, rat is not nearly as vicious to the weaver as say griffin. Uh, if you ever want to get a situation that will absolutely put it and in bloodshed, put a Red Talon and a glass walker in an enclosed space for a long period of time. Uh, yeah, actually, that that's a word to the wise. If you're going to a situation where no spotlight's going to be there, turn your phone off and don't show it to him. He's not too um, keen on them. Yeah, yeah, I've gone through like six phones already. Yeah. Um, but However, I did hit him in the nose with one. Then he beats the shit out. Yeah, well, okay. you learned your, you learned your lesson. You don't hit him. He's he's higher up the totem pole than you are. He's very high up the totem pole. Well, it, gener it generally I say hello. He tries to beat the shit out of me, and this is how this relationship is working so far. If you so think instead, about I hit him with a phone. Think about it for a second. He's obviously he's trying to teach you things, but he wasn't born as he's not a hamid. He wasn't born as a human. He was born as a wolf, a lupus. So you come from a very different cultural background to him, if you think about it. And you're not rune. Him actually fighting you teaches you. He hasn't killed you, obviously. No. He hasn't done any lasting damage. However, he's te probably testing your limits and trying to teach you because he's probably a lot better at combat than you are. But you, you'll learn from him. So obviously, if he does any lasting harm, trying to learn what... If he's if he he's probably looking for a reason as well to hurt you, so he's gauging you both mentally and physically. He probably wouldn't put it that way. No, he wouldn't. But, but you're not, yeah, <laughs> as an Aharon, you're meant to be a warrior, a combatant. So you have to learn how to fight, how to defend yourself and others. The Garu have an obligation to defect, to defend kinfolk, to defend the the Sept and the Cairn, and just generally defend Gaia. Now I said the triad out of balance, so you've got uh -huh. the wild, the triad, the wild, the weaver, and the worm. Uh. There's meant to be a balance between them. More often than not, you're go almost always going to be in conflict with the conflict with the worm. Um, like I said, there's black spiral dancers, but as well as them, there are other beings. Um, Fomori. Uh, basically, I think I was described to before as uh, horror movie monsters. Dark they are enough. humans that have been possessed by spirits. Unclean spirits. Kind of like demons, but apparently there's something else that actually gets called demons. Yeah, demons are extremely powerful, regrettably. Um, Spotlight doesn't like them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I won't go into that, but the thing is, even if you destroy a demon's body, you destroy the host, the demon itself can still find a new host. So, so it's like um, a parasite. They don't have any particular yeah. metal banes? Not that I know of. Mm. Figures. They... They're tough one. I've been trying to... I've had to have dealing with them and... I've been trying to figure things out about them. But my current theory is it is, yeah, it's like a spirit that's possessing someone. But if you just kill the body, all they do is they go into somebody else's body. So unless you can kill the spirit, 
there's no point to actually engaging them because you could get yourself killed. Or, at the best case scenario, you destroy the body, they're pissed off at you now, and you're actually after ruining somebody else's life. So you need to find an appropriate way to combat them, whether it's by destroying the spirit or trapping it. I don't know how, but that's my don't, current theory. Don't we put spirits in, like, items? Yes, and we usually... Usually it's spirits that are friendly to us, or at the very least, spirits that we can control. So what's stopping us from putting one in a toaster? Um, well, first off, unless you're a glass walker, you can expect everyone in your tribe to hit you over the head. Second off, even if you're a glass walker, why the fuck are you putting a spirit in a toaster? No, I mean a demon spirit. Yeah, we can't... They're not the same sort of spirit. Ah. At least not that I know of. There's going to be nuances to all these different things you're going to have to learn and pick up. There's probably someone somewhere who knows the exact right answer, but they're not necessarily right here. There's things that have to be known to defend the park. Um, at this stage, they're kind of they've gone through the forest for a while, and they come across the forge. Uh, Monty, and, Monty and Kushil built some time back. Monty uh, goes up, unlocks uh, unlocks the door. He goes and he see he uh, here with a padlock. And he says, "This now, this isn't finished, but." He'll kind of like take out keys. He's not the only one with these keys. And he opens a uh, padlock on a box. And he goes, This, he lifts up a large silver sword. This isn't finished, but this is going to be a clave. Now be careful with that because uh, that's going to hurt me as much as a stabby pointy thing will. But. It's yeah, it's silver. It's, it's silver, so it's it's gonna hurt you a lot more. So he'll kind of now this one's not finished, so I don't think anyone's gonna get upset. But if you want to kind of feel the weight of it, he'll kind of hand hand it over. He'll 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 hold the blade tentatively and allow um. Ifrit you see, Ifrit like leap backwards and just snarl at the silver. This mm. is, this is used by Garu warriors. Someday you might earn one. Uh, kind Eric of, actually holds out his hand to take it if yeah he'll, he'll we won't it's not finished yet there's no spirit inside in it yeah it's like burns mm. <sighs> burns nose good balance though yeah working on that one for a while effort you have you I'm guessing you've probably never done any uh, blacksmithing but have you ever done any metal work of any kind yeah yeah I learned to do okay. some metal work well I'd like you to come in here first we'll start off with doing iron because it's not as expensive. And once you get the general skills of it down, I'll show you how to do it, then you could start um, working on them too. It'll show, it'll let everyone know that you're willing to help Decept in other ways. And, um, yes. How much iron do you need? Uh, we've, th th There's a, the iron's relatively cheap. You don't need to it, obtain it's any It's out from his pocket, another set of car keys, and tosses them to Monty. It's, a lot more than that, and it's different materials. But that, uh, yeah, that's that's not iron. No, that's no. that's it's metal. It's yeah. it's cut it down and... like copper, copper, nickel, and bismuth. It's not going to be useful for this. But Cars I'll... are made of copper, nickel, and no car keys. Did you say? No, uh, no cars. Cars are made of aluminum mostly, and can we actually plastic. make anything out of aluminum? Like the pipe? It's I mean, kind it's, of no. It's it does it doesn't hold an edge. It's not hard enough. If with the very few of the weapons they make out of iron here, it's mostly for practice. I was doing a while back, but I'll show you how to do it. You make them, and once it's done, we melt it down. You start over again. It's you just until we're not letting you work, move on to silver in case anything gets ruined until you've got the base skills down. But if you know some bit of metalworking, that'll make it a lot easier. Um. But I do hold on to a few basic weapons. I don't carry around silver because people might get the wrong impression. I have had to carry it once or twice um, at the request of people just to protect um, kinfolk, but generally I don't like to. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. It smells bad. It makes yeah. my nose hurt. But eventually, if you prove yourself, you might get some. Now, Eric, you're a, you're a tiered, I believe you said before. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you're like smashes windshields and um, some of the others that I met before. So a tier, from what I understand, once I've got the physical part done, they'll put a spirit into it, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a clave. Yep. 
It involves summoning and binding the spirit into it. Usually at least one spirit, sometimes two spirits, depending on what we're trying to get. But usually it's a spirit of war uh, that you put into it. And that makes it... It still hurts to wield it, but it's... Uh, a bit more effective in your hands. Now, I want you to think, if why would the Garu be equipping themselves with silver weapons? Um, because other things out there are hurt by silver. Not just other things, yeah. other werewolves. Specifically black spiral dancers. They're the ones you want to worry about. Now, if that's going to hurt you like a bitch, it's going to hurt them like a bitch, especially when you're swinging it. So... Someday you might be fighting the Black Spiral, that's one of these. I think it's a good idea if you learn how to uh, make the physical side, at least for the moment. It's probably going to be a long while before you uh, gain the respect to actually wield one yourself. But someday it might be possible. And at that stage, if you're more familiar with the clave, it might be a bit easier for you to uh, to wield. Spotlight's been teaching me to fight in uh, the giant wolf form, so I don't really that have much... I don't have much knowledge uh, he's biting probably, with weapons. He's probably teaching with claws, though, I'm guessing. Biting. Biting biting, biting is actually amazingly useful if you're in his bow form. Okay. Um, if you stay There's in Hamid, I can help you practice um, fighting with uh, more mundane weapons if you're... If you're uh, although I think you said you had some experience with them. I, I've got a little bit. You know, I can... I can use this knife as he, like, pats his pocket, but okay, not exactly the best at it. Monty will go over to another area where it's not actually locked away. There's just two things about the size of a, size of claves. They're just made of iron. And he goes, okay, well, um, he hands him one. Right, try to hit me. And Monty's doing defensive action. Just roll your dex plus melee. And ice stream. We're not actually going for full contact, obviously. <laughs> One success with clave difficulty. Um, well, we're, we're going for regular difficulty because it's not a clave yet. So yeah. That's, okay, regular so difficulty, just, uh, just treat it like a sword. Okay. And Monty just kind of like manages to actually block it. Not as uh, well as he would have hoped, but he actually managed to block it. So, okay, well... One of the things we can do between training is that uh, I know a little bit, not necessarily used to using claves, I prefer you know, a nice axe or whatever, but um, we can practice with a few different weapons. If you're going to be defending yourself, best you know how to do it right. Obviously, there's a lot of people who are way better at this than me, and I clearly have no experience of fighting in Krenos, but um, Spotlight will teach you the, uh, the wolf side, and you can have, there's uh, plenty more people who can teach you the, uh, the Hamid side. And if you want to attempt a friendly knife fight at some point, I also am somewhat skilled with knives. Actually, um, okay, it's, it's, it's kind of more up to you, Eric, but um, of the rituals, I know that there's some, I don't know because he's not a, uh, he's only he's still only a club if he's, if he's okay to be taught rituals, but of all the rituals he can be taught, uh, right of cleansing seems like a very useful one. I've got that Actually, You've, you know Spotlight, that one? To, Spotlight forced me to learn that one. That is good. Yes. You're gonna There's one this. other one that you should learn, provided you promise not to use it to bind anything stupid. Define stupid. Um, yeah. Well, uh, pretty much, let's see here. You're not, a, you're not a glass worker, so don't you know bind any electronics to yourself. Mainly just stuff. This, this one is called Talisman Dedication. It allows you to... I don't know if anyone's actually done this for your clothes, but this allows you to choose... Nope. Spotlight thinks it's funny. Right. Well, the nice thing is this allows you to keep your clothes when you change shape without them ripping. So yeah. you're not running around like Hulk and only without you know the, the nice little PG um, purple underpants. Point. This is your character knows about <clears throat> glass works. Okay, I'm looking at it. 
Um, binding inappropriate items to oneself through the right of talisman dedication, such as chainsaws, smartphones, or amputures, this does not apply to glasswalkers or bonors. So he can actually... It's okay for him to, to, to do that. Oh, I, I, may know that, uh, that, I may know that the, you know, bonors are okay with that. That doesn't mean I'm okay with that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, you shouldn't do it. Some of the guys get away with it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, we could actually do rolls, and after one or two rolls, um, he could possibly learn it. But, yeah, uh, actually, hang on one second. Um, what do I have? You know, uh, he starts actually counting things off on his fingers. It's like, what do I have dedicated? Okay, excellent. Um... I'll just use one of these swords to dedicate them to me, to me temporarily to show uh, how the rite is done. Monty will hand him the iron sword he had. Alrighty. As I reread the ritual. Uh, do, 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 do. It is doo -doo -doo, Mystic Rites. Mystic Rites. So no, that's not it. It's uh, it's in, it's under Mystic Rites. So as a Mystic Rite, it's Wits plus Rituals, difficulty seven. Mm-hmm. Mm, wits, you say. Rituals, you say. So. He passes one Gnosis point for object dedicated. And a character uh, may never have more objects bound to himself to his Gnosis score. Yep. So, each... You're, uh, you're in Arun, but I can teach you the Arun version of this. However, first I'll show you how Theurges do it. Each auspice has their own methods that they bind it to themselves. Usually tied to Moon Phase. I believe it's... Half moon right now? Sounds right. Been in the forge the last couple nights, haven't looked up at the sky. Um, so, uh, normally it's something that you're expected to do under your auspice moon, but isn't always required. And uh, pulls out the, uh, you know, pulls the sword and spends uh, the, uh, you know, spends a amount of time where he actually, uh, you know, first he actually, you know, puts the sword into, you know, through his belt, uh, and. Uh, then just starts uh, marking it, uh, marking it out on his leg, as it were, uh, as he starts chanting to himself. And now I roll my wits plus rituals, which will be six dice. So. One success. Uh, so as uh, he, is that is there another one that belongs to that? There we go. Uh, and uh, you know he, uh, you know, f finishes the ritual, uh, nods to himself, and then he shifts into uh, Krynos. Actually, he shifts all the way down into lupus, and the sword is not there anymore. However, there is a sort of, you know, among his, on his fur, there's a sort of patchy uh, gray sword shape on his uh, left leg uh, against his mostly brown and black fur. Uh, and then he ships, uh, shifts back into Hamid, and the sword's there. The mo the thing that we most commonly use this first on is your clothing, but any weapons that you are likely to carry on you that aren't fetishes or talons, as those will change with you, because they're already 
optimistically bound to you, those uh, will stay with you as you sh uh, change shape and as you enter the umbra. Which makes it one of the most practical rights out there. All right, so if I have to do this like spotlight. That means we can now ruin. Just flip the knife out. I'm gonna roll a willpower for this because this is gonna suck. But you don't. You don't actually have the right either. You have to yeah. <laughs> learn it, which is gonna take time. Being shown a few times. Yep. Technically, it takes about a week to learn a ritual, and then you have to roll into rituals. <laughs> oh, at least you rolled well on your first attempt. He takes out his knife, looks at it, measured it on his arm, and grabs it. That was actually a will roll. Jabs yeah. the knife into his arm and slowly makes an outline of it. Ow. That's one way to do it. Spotlight has scars for the things that he has. So. Yes. That's how Summer Runes choose to do it. The other th beyond that, though, you also have to uh, spend some time connecting with it on a spot spiritual level. Effectively, even though it doesn't have an awakened spirit bound into it, it, is, it still has a spirit sleeping within it. And you must connect that to yourself. Mm. And that requires how much you can actually bind to yourself depends on how deep your uh, connection to the spirit world is. Um, as a Hamid, I'm guessing you don't have a very strong connection to the spirit world. Yet. Um. Even if you can only bind one thing, if you could get a jumpsuit. Because you Actually, might not be in a situation to retrieve your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, all your clothing is considered one thing. Oh, okay. That's pretty handy. Uh, that, that, that is one of the handier aspects of this. A full set of clothing is considered a single uh, item. Uh, I know from what I've heard from some glass walkers, they've gotten a whole box of ammunition and counted that as a single item to bind to themselves. Then again, about half of them seem to have you know, fetish guns anyways, so it's not like it matters that much. <laughs> yeah, Spotlight would beat me harder if you saw that. Well, to a certain extent, I wouldn't be surprised if Spotlight just chose to beat you because you're a Bonar. Not that being a Bonar is bad, but it's more that you're at the bottom of the heap. <laughs> Prove him wrong. Make exactly. sure to keep your head on your shoulders. Be smart about what you do. Now, Spotlight might be a fine Arun, but he is a lupus. You will understand what it is to be human in a way he never will. I don't think you want to understand it that way. Even. He doesn't want to. He's Red Talon. Exactly. But you can understand that. Um, he has to help guard the Sept, as will you. But you might be able to act in ways he won't be able to. You can blend into a crowd of people in a way he would never even want to. Well, except for that rich place, because, you know, walking around with gangster tattoos and uh, clothing kind of... Your clothes can be changed. Called. The tattoos you can use makeup on. you got to start thinking about these things. You can conceal yourself. We put you in a business suit... We get a, a makeup that'll just cover up the tattoos. You could blend in right perfectly there. 
And honestly, you'd be surprised how upwardly mobile people with tattoos are these days. So it all depends. You've got to start thinking about how people perceive you and how you can change it. There's always ways around things. There's always ways to make sure that use their perceptions, use their prejudices, make them see what they want to see. I've been given money by some of the Garu. I could wear different clothes. As you might have noticed, mine are fairly patched up. But a homeless person wearing okay clothes that are a little bit maybe mismatched, few patches, it's like being invisible sometimes. And that can be very useful. You don't have to actually use any rights or tricks if you just blend in. You mean like how I could go to like any of the Latin areas... And just, you know, no one could find me if I didn't want to be found. That's it's more mean. difficult. Yeah, if you start blending in. But you can blend into other areas too. Like I was saying, the tattoos can be covered up with makeup. Clothes can be changed. You can learn to speak uh, with a different accent. Which is really handy if you can figure it out. If you can start doing things like that, you could be... The Ahrun who can walk into some gala ball. You might want to get a few pointers from some of the silver fangs. You can be the Garu who walks into the soup kitchen. You can be the Garu who walks in anywhere. And if someone needs to be taken care of, shall we say, you walk right past security, you take him out, and you walk out again. You you know, you cover up whatever needs to be. Um, Monty turns around as he sees somebody... Um, can we get the uh, entrance to the forge? A rather regal-looking silver fang walks towards you. He's in helmet form, but you get this feeling that he is the silver fang that will rule you all someday. Um, he's in his fine business suit, as always. Um, nice shoes. Gentlemen. Well, you could even try to dress like that. I doubt you'd be able to pull it off as well as him, though. But you can just be a face in the crowd. Like I said, makeup, different clothes, change your mannerisms, and even if you're not necessarily top dog in the social situation, you can be one amongst many. Uh, one, someone that isn't noted on. You're pretty handy. I could lend you suit. If you want. It might be useful if we could get some um, makeup that'll blend with your skin tone. You were in a suit. You maybe, uh, maybe you could, maybe you could tag along, walk a mile in somebody else's shoes, so to speak. Oh, um, I just realized the only two ragabesh I know here are both lupus. And okay, one of them's glassworker, but they're both lupus. Really? Yeah. I know two Hamid. I know two Glasswalkers. Oh, it's more yeah. along the lines of your your Ragabash is usually going to be the sort to you know come up with things like, hey, this is the exact same. This is the exact thing you need in order to cut you know to match your skin tone. Because if anyone should know disguises, it should be the Ragabash. Monty actually is going to take for a while. I'm going to roll um, Perception plus um, Larceny, say for this guy's. Mm -hmm. For just kind of trying to think of exactly what would go. Let's see. Um. Uh, Monty takes out a pen and paper. And he starts going, oh, oh, uh, and he's just kind of like he's like asking you to like lift up the shirt and, was out, and he's matching the, with five successes. The man's matching like everything. Like this will cover up this bit here for this bit. You want this slightly darker tone because that'll do well. So it's like get these ones from this particular brand. Use this one here. If you find any problems, come back to me. And suddenly the Bodnar kinfolk is appearing a lot better on that count. He's like, you do this, 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 and this. Wow, I'm never going to roll that well again anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the forge. Just jump in when you uh, when you want. 
Oh, so to describe my character for those who haven't seen him before, uh, he looks similar to me, shorter hair, uh, slightly more, uh, you know, shorter beard, and also his right eye is, uh, has a sky over it and is pretty much, a scar over it vertically and is pretty much gone. Very obviously, you know, a uh, guru, a Krynos claw scar. So, you know, he tur turns to the Silver Fang. He's like, I don't think we've met. I'm Eric Cronenberg. Robert Masters. I'm new to town. Well, always good to have some new folks. Fenrir Godi. Godi. Theurge. Um. Different cultures, different places, there's going to be different names for the same thing. Do not make the mistake of calling a Galliard a bard. That was the thing that was initially described to me as. I've met one or two Galliards who've taken umbrage. So, word to the wise. Uh. Well, the usual sight of uh, uh, Daniel or it's the swarm walking the area just checking things out. He's usually about looking at people. This time he happens to be here. Uh, this the uh, the forge is well into the trees, but you know, you could be taking a shortcut to check out another area. Um, but you'll see there's a bit of a a few more people in the forge than usual. Oh, yeah, and if I see him, I'll wave at him. Mm. We'll have the wrong say, Rick, because, you know, that means. <laughs> uh, Robert, what auspice are you? Aaron. Um, mm. You might be able, if you have time, uh, to give a free to a few, uh, a few pointers with him. Um, melee weapons, or any other advice you can give them, I'm sure would be appreciated. Oh, I have no skill with a sword or such, but I can throw a couple of punches. H hang on, hang on. A silver fang a rune that can't use a sword? I have to write this down somewhere. Oh, fuck this. Monty <laughs> takes up a couple more of the, uh, the iron claves. He's like, right. <laughs> We're not telling spot like this. <laughs> but if if, they could if I them. have to inform you, he says in this tone of like I'm better than you all. Um, I was trained in different types of combat, the economic type, the ones that the humans, the mortals, will not see. See, this is what I'm talking about. You can use other different weapons. There's your claws, there's your bite, there's the glaives. But it seems Robert's taking... He's, but he's fighting in a whole way spotlight never could. Yes. And you can do that too. You can find different battlefields where you can take the fight to your enemy. Ones where they're weaker. Use your head about it. Any particular form that you trained in? Finance and the most gentlemanly of combat, boxing. Ah. Uh, uh, so nothing. Gentlemanly. <laughs> the so what Marquis de Fantelier rules? No, British street fighting, but. Well, at least it'll be useful. <laughs> Uh, Let's say we all have our pasts. Uh, Raids is once again wearing the ratty clothing he usually wears. Well, once again a different set of ratty clothing, but, you know, same thing. And he uh, is scratching, as usual himself, trying to keep the side of his face hidden with that has the... <laughs> Nothing but bone and the eye in it. Well, to be fair, they are um, they're well outside of view of any normal people. Mm. This is um, for this is a uh, raids the swarm. 
Hello. Um, I'm Jose. You can call me Ifrit. First time I met him a while back, he was... I don't know much as you see him now, except for since then he's taken... I don't know where it came from, but he took one a hell of a hit. But that's one of the perks of being Garrow, I suppose. He's still, uh, he's still walking around. It was a sniper with silver bullets. This is the kind of thing you're going to end up having to live up to. I don't know what Auspice Raids the Swarm is, but... Um, Philodox, Monty. Philodox. Philodox. So yep. there we go. But the thing is, you can do this. You can do these things. You can survive hits that... Well, people just normally shouldn't be able to. And you can keep going when others um, falter. It'll hurt like a mother, but you'll survive. But as Robert's a fine example of, there are different ways to fight. Mm -hmm. And having different tools at your your disposal, being able to choose the the right one for the right enemy, could make you very scary, Mm Aaron. A new person. Um, A cub. Bone or... Don't mm-hmm. really need to try and guess the breed, I'm guessing. Strange is his flating He skin. might, actually, because he's not... Um, his first change was his introduction to uh, this side of things, shall we say. Mm. So Man. what can you sell? Uh, what, uh, what, uh, introduce yourself, Ifrit. Uh, I'm Jose Alvarez. They call me Ifrit. Um into larceny, burning things, stealing cars, getting the gangs to do, to join together to do things. Um, also, probably the best getaway driver in the city, if you need one of those. I'll keep you in mind then. Hmm, yes. Ah, Metis. Metis is what happens when two... Garrow decide to preach litany together, and Metis is what uh, suffers usually the scorn that should be falling on those two. Oh, don't ask somebody if they're Metis. Ask them what breed they are. Some people will get all offended. That's their problem, but they might make it yours. Um. Raids just smiles a bit and goes, Calling anyone who isn't a Metis is an equivalent to... You're a gangbanger, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I would assume anyone who would have got you... A woman would have been in trouble? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there'd have been stabbings happening. Or possible yeah, shootings. Well, if you call someone who isn't a Metis a Metis, except expect the response to be sort of kind of similar. Because you're actually telling them a lot of unfortunate implications about their parents, for one. <laughs> now, here's something you got to think about at first. You're an Arun, and occasionally at some point, even just being a Garu, you're going to make bodies. Now, if you're lucky, and if things are going well, they're just a few leeches, you know, vampires. They have a nice habit, from what I've seen, of crumbling to dust. It makes the cleanup a lot easier. But they might be more human. That's going to leave you in a body, and you don't want it being traced back to you. I don't know if you've any experience with removing bodies, but... um. For some reason, rats tend to help me get rid of bodies. I'm not sure why. Well, you're a bone nor. No. Yeah, but he's not even. He's he hasn't even been, uh, gone through his hmm. uh, rite of passage yet. He's not officially part of the tribe. Has he been in the Umbra yet? The huh? Uh, I take that as a no. You, you mean what I've been bashing my head against for a few weeks? Oh, you've been trying to cross? You don't, so, the spirit world. 
it's called the Umbra, or you know, which means the shadow. Uh, it's kind of the other half of our nature. We are, you know, creatures of of uh, body and spirit, both. So uh, we can, with some effort, cross what we call the gauntlet into uh, the spirit realm. So I'm supposed to like look into something clear. I don't see a pool here, uh, but he just flicks open his knife. Ideally, a mirror. Right, so. Yeah, that would work uh, if it's you know polished well enough. Um, All right. And then I'm supposed to try to step sideways, right? Usually, what I do. I don't understand that. Is uh, the you know the trick that worked for me was first I would s stare into my reflection's eyes, and then try and stare past them at what's at what you know, at what's reflected in my reflection's eyes, and that at least is what got me over the first time. After you've done it a couple times, it you don't even think about it anymore. Well, it'd be the gauntlet here, since we're inside we're, the we're we're not inside the cairn, but we're well we're well into the to the, to the trees here. Um, I'm thinking the gauntlet's going to be maybe five. Yeah, pro f probably five or four, somewhere yeah. in that range. There is he's one. really trying to impress you, so I'll say he's going to spend a willpower on this. Looks into his knife. Looks through his eyes. And you spend a willpower. You're actually you're yeah. going to make it through in a decent amount of time. So yeah. Uh, one second, because it actually rolling determines how long it takes. So you get so. and you see he's he's like trying to step sideways while keeping the knife in front of him. Let's see here. So um, two successes. So yeah, and it takes you about thirty seconds to actually shift through. When you get through to the other side. You see the trees, you see the forge, um, but as you look around the place, you can see the uh, the forge. There seems to be kind of a heat coming off it, and you can kind of smell metal. The trees just kind of rusting. They almost seem bigger, and it's almost like they're taking note of you. And I'm also going to spend a willpower to uh, make. Uh, roll myself to step sideways. Let's see if I do as well. Well, I at least... <laughs> Thanks to the at, least I sp at least I spent the willpower. If, remember, if you spend willpower, you're automatically seeing no matter how many ones you get, you get your one success. Uh, meanwhile, Raid pulls out a old box and puts on some pilot... So it takes me about five glasses. minutes to get through. I'm rolling activation first, success, minus two to Ooh. the gauntlet difficulty, which was what? Five, I think five. it was. Five of gauntlet. Okay. Difficulty three for me. Four successes. So you get through instantly. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Theurge takes five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see um, people... Who are in the real world walker in the, from the Umbra? You can attempt to peek into yeah. it, but then you won't be able to see what's uh, happening on the spirit okay. side of the world. Okay, that's fine. So Monty's not coming up, obviously, then, because he's just a person. Oh. If he was coming up, he'd come up weird, and then we'd have a very different scene happening after this. <laughs> what's up, Monty? Why are you all uh, not kinfolk like? <laughs> So, you know, after about five oh. minutes, I finally make it through. It's like, hmm. Weird Heritage three with rats brood, so... There actually are small rat spirits just, like, scuttering around. How much do you have? Three. So, I'll, I'll actually use spirit speech and talk to the spirits and say... I will... Being an admin, I'll take a roll of the spirit. <laughs> There's a little rat climbing up a freak's clothing, and he just kind of like goes up to his 
So I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, you know, you guys will hear what I'm saying as it, you know, as I'm saying it, but you know, I can understand what the spirit's saying in return. Like, hello there, little rat. Hello. You see, why are you uh, climbing up this cub? He's one of rats, like me. <laughs> I imagine your image in the umbra, your 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 gun look a bit more rat like. Um nose is kinda bigger. His oh. teeth are really sharp looking. You mean he is a bonar or do you mean he is even closer, Kim? Both. Ah. Well then. Does he have any food? And he's just kinda of looking around off the shoulder. I like the uh, spirit wonders if you have any food for him. One second. As I roll my spirit heritage to see if I can understand what the rat is saying. I'm not sure it works like that. In one of the books it says that you can understand your spirit heritage. Uh, you yeah, might get a better on. understanding of their body language and things. I don't think you get... Um, I have to talk about that with um, the SD. Well, that's fine. It's, if it's written in core, then it's written in core, and we're mostly oh, written rules is written. That's why I'm checking it right now. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, da, 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 da. Spirit heritage. Let's see here. Uh, you add it to any social rules. They view you as one of your own. Um... No, it doesn't you actually yeah. give you the ability to speak with them, though. But you probably, Unless... because, because you're going for social roles, if you're doing perception empathy as well, you, you're going to be able to gauge its mood a lot better. You know, this thing, it likes you. When you yep. go for a role, it likes you. It's, it's just kind of real. It's, it's kind of look around, just, you know. Wow. Mm, spotlight told, told me something about spirits. I'm going to do a wits something. What's empathy to uh, that? Oh, is it three more dice or three? It's three uh, more dice to social Yeah, three more roles. dice to your social rules. So you do, you're able to gauge their mood better, yep. effectively. I remember something. And then he's like, I don't know how to do it, though. What is it you remember? Spotlight said that I could use a gnosis to... Use yes. like to a bribe or uh, you can effectively spirits. offer it a part of your uh, of your spiritual power. That's uh, hmm. its ears are kind of parking up and it's looking between the two of you quite quite happy with the change. And that de- that that would definitely uh, be a fairly effective chiminage to offer it. Is he mm. spit gnosis? Block of chi. Large block of chi. Large block of cheese in hands. Once, once it appears, it kind of climbs down your arm and it moves to the block, but it kind of looks at you. You know, for a second, because this is clearly a very small spirit, but it's looking at you just kind of to make sure it's okay first, and then it just starts happily eating away, and then it climbs right back up your arm, and it kind of nuzzling you slightly. You've got a rat on your shoulder that likes you. <laughs> well, that'll that definitely... Explains, that explains why the rats would help you. Yes, it does. Huh. A herd rat has different forms. Uh, Mother rat and the god emperor rat, or something. God emperor. Rat just kind of looks at you and he's like... I've heard a number of things offered, names given to rat, but not god emperor. He doesn't. I, 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 I just turned for a rat. Yeah, I, I, I just, I just turned to, <laughs> to Daniel and like. <laughs> I 
Mother rat is a good way to go about it. I wouldn't go around elevating anything to godhood unless I'm very, very certain. And emperor rats, well, there might be some of, <clears throat> for instance, Falcon's Brood who take umbrage at the suggestion. <laughs> Not to mention the rest of their own nation. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm actually most the most likely response you'd get from a good chunk might be along the lines of derisive laughter. <laughs> Not too derisive because it's still a, an incarna, but <laughs> the rat just kind of looks at you. What moon did it choose for him? Uh full. Good. Rat is a war totem. Yes. The, uh, it, it kind of pops itself up, like trying to look more intimidating and vicious. Your uh, your little friend was was glad that you're in a room as a uh, rat as a totem of war. It just kind of has. Still the rat, yeah. It's just kind of like half viciously, just kind of like makes biting motions. <laughs> And as anyone who's ever seen rats fight, they are indeed vicious fighters. They swarm things. Yes. Rats individually, individually, they are capable of taking down someone dying in the dying in the attempt, but still killing them with disease. And in numbers, they can take down. Well, a number of things. Remind yourself of the saying of a cornered rat, and just be happy most bone gnawers will follow the same rule of not picking a fight until they have to. <laughs> Ass. You're definitely one of the more laid back of the tribes. Well, some hmm. would probably argue that we would we would be well served to be a bit more fighty about concepts of uh, non immediate survival. Hmm, that would be a good way to put it. Hmm. But, so... I heard that there's totems and things that packs sometimes get. Yes, a pack forms a spiritual bond with a, uh... uh a spirit that is, uh... tied to... You know, some larger spirit, usually an incarnate spirit, and uh, they get a lesser avatar of that spirit as uh, uh, that gives them a spiritual connection to the rest of the pack. Uh, him, and also, tell him to get his pack to pit rat. Uh, pack to pit rat. Rat could always use more packs. Your little friend is suggesting that when you join a pack, you uh, choose the rat totem. <laughs> Do I have to be in a pack to choose rat? The, you, there are ways to have an individual totem. Uh, personally, I, I would recommend actually joining a pack. We are not... The whole lone wolf line you hear that is 100% bullshit. We are pack animals. Uh, and rats are not exactly pack animals, but they are communal animals. So, uh, a werewolf alone is a werewolf that dies very quickly. Because as big and bad as we are, <clears throat> there are bigger and badder things. And we fight them on a regular basis. So I'm guessing that pick, 
he, he looks at the rat. Choosing a rat is a totem. I would then have to get someone else to join me in choosing rat as a totem. Um, I would worry about that in any serious manner after you <clears throat> make it into quiet. Yes, once you've gone through your rite of passage, then then I'd start worrying about joining a pack and getting a totem. Yes, make him train hard. <laughs> He's a bonor, he'll always be one of rats. Make him train hard and then he can he can offer lots of chiminage. Yes, yes. The uh your friend is suggesting that you train very hard. Yes. So that you can offer so that you can offer Appropriate chiminage to rat, and even if he does not have rat as a totem, we can um, we can still help him when he needs, as long as he brings chiminage. And even if you choose a different spirit for your pack totem, uh, the spirits of rat will be friendly to you, and uh, so long as you offer them chiminage, they will be willing to help. What's that word you just said? Uh, chiminage. It's uh, effectively, it's basically a, an exchange of favors. I, you know, you you help a spirit, and a spirit helps you. Hmm. Uh, different spirits have different things they want, uh, and even different rat spirits will have different personal preferences. Some will, you know, this one wanted food, and you gave it some gnosis in the form of a nice block of cheese. Uh, you know, some other rats might want you to, say, get rid of rat poison or rat traps that are being left out in an area. Uh, or, e <laughs> <laughs> or even to um, uh, set free a bunch of rats that are being used for animal testing, which is a fairly common... Uh, Fairly oh, common uh, thing out there. Oh, 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 the rats are saying, yes, and he should have many cubs. We need more, we need, we need, we need more bone nors. There's, the, there's no, there's no rackin, so more bone nors. And he, he kind of looks at the, uh, he looks at raids for a second, and he just kind of sags, he goes like, have many cubs, and he looks back, <laughs> he's looking straight at Ifrit. Cubs, lots of cubs, big litters. So and it's more, also More than the stars in the sky. Cover them, cover also, the cities it, with rats. <laughs> and then, then the cities will disappear, and then we'll all be wait. No, keep the buildings. That means that way the falcon can't spot us. <laughs> it's also suggesting that you start seeing your way to breeding a more uh, more cubs. You know what? Screw getting a pack. I want the rat right now. <laughs> all the cubs, all the cubs. <laughs> No, Nothing he has to train. He has to become a. He has to become a client. He 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 says you have order. to train first. You 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 have to. You, you're effectively right now. Even though, I'm sure that, you know. I, from what you said, you were a big man out there. Here, you're still the meat. And uh, it's we're gonna be you know as. Tough a fighter as you were, you've mostly fought people. We're gonna teach you how to fight, among other things, things that could be nearly powerful enough to be considered gods. Not right off the bat, but what we're fighting is, you know, part of the litany is to, uh, you know, fight the uh, worm wherever it's. Uh, Dwells and was it wherever lives and breathes lives and dwells something like that. And uh, right, so that means I gotta train harder, but mm -hmm. then tell and then kick spotlights of ass. Good no, luck on no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Much training needed. Spotlight <laughs> is known to us. Spotlight is known to all of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> so many gazelles. So many gazelles. They're too big. 
I, I, I think th they have a healthy respect for Spotlight's prowess and suggest you train a lot more before you try and kick his ass. Well, that'll show that I'm ready to beat Clyth, won't it? If I can, you know, kick Spotlight's ass. That will help, but it's not just... It's not just my... You have to understand our ways. You have to understand the ways of the Gru. You have to understand the ways of the Bonars. You have to understand the ways of the Arun. Someone tell me I'm not going to have to sit in a classroom ever again. Just please. No. We... Thank you. Even... I mean, um, I think... There might be a couple glasswalkers that will teach that for certain skills, but no. For the most part, we're very hands-on, and uh, well, if you mess up, you won't you won't be sent to sit in the corner with a dunce cap on. It's far more you likely you'll get cuffed. You'll be a limb if you survive. Think of it. It's more like basic training on a truly insane level. <laughs> yes, yes, he should he should he should come back when he's a client and then maybe someday there'll be rack in here and he can teach him to spread the plagues and lots of humans will die and then there'll be more food for the rats. Yes. And for the record, despite the facts. Oh Ah. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? All right. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, I remember sitting here, I'm like, I'm not going to translate everything this guy is saying. <laughs> it's like, wipe out the humans. I'll get some rack in to teach him the proper way. Less humans. Many cubs. Less humans. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll actually, at one point, turn to this, turn to this bird and say... You do not realize that for more cubs, we still need humans, right? Kinfolk. I didn't say all the humans. More humans. That's the rack do. I miss the rack hmm. I'm sure you do. <laughs> uh, but is he just kind of climbs right? down, seeing as your guys are getting ready to leave, and he just kind of, like, he stops by you, and he goes, good to your, and he just kind of scampers away into the underbrush. I'm going to need to learn that gift. Oh, Cobb? Mm hmm? What do you see past the park? I'm going to make a... Uh, fright check. <laughs> that seems reasonable with this being New York and the evil things that are actually outside the park. Fuck me. Um, if its eyes go just bug-eyed wide and um, suddenly is dove behind the forge. We do have water packs. But this is why, when you're not in the cairn, you will think twice about jumping into the Umbra. Don't go to the view Umbra alone. Take a path with you. If you can, look first. He's uh, still just not necessarily cowering, but try to figure out a way to get away from the bad things that he, have se that he has seen. Just to uh, let you know how bad this is, I am from Atlantic City. Atlantic City does not currently look this bad. Well, it's a little easier on the eye in the nearest of the park. Yeah. Now... So shall we cut to the, um, the Garou coming back out of the Umbra? Yeah. <laughs> we don't need rolls for it, we'll just say it, we'll just say it happens. Uh, um, diving! We'll do diving out of the Umbra. I did to make this a success. <laughs> um, will we say <laughs> that um, if you're off that Robert, uh, Monty was willing to show him some of the stuff for uh, the claves, because, you know, he might learn, he, like, these are only iron ones, you can see there's metal one, uh, yeah. like a silver one side, but it's like, you know, someday, you, you know, you might be uh, given one. So he... Mm. 
he does seem to actually know what he's doing when wielding them. He's got, you know, he's got three dots in melee, so he's pretty good for a kinfolk. And in response, Robert will pr- most likely be talking about how his new latest investment is uh, giving him a good return. Monty is actually going to be listening. He doesn't seem to know a huge amount about finance, but any of the basically related stuff he knows about, and he's listening and asking questions <laughs> about the finance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he is giving totally good advice. <laughs> I'll roll his um, intelligence plus... Uh, Plus Malay from how Monty's doing in, in teaching. Okay. Oh. Five. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when you come back out, the two of them are there with the iron claves, you know, and Hobbit, uh, you know, just sparring away slowly, going through and talking oh. about high end finance deals. <laughs> <laughs> Stop corrupting our kin. <laughs> Remember, Ifrit, it's not just the clave or the claw or the fang. Anything can be turned into a weapon if you put your mind to it. It's all about picking the right target and attacking it with the right weapon. And you can avoid attacking if you're clever about it, too. Make your enemy fight your enemy. Or oh, make yeah. sure they're not an enemy. Usually our enemies are predefined for us, though. I've heard Garu say that, you know, with the litany used to protect the veil, but to put bluntly, if somebody sees, uh, finds out, int- or sees something, you or might have seen something, you can always go about different ways if you think about things beforehand. You can avoid them having found out. That way, you don't have to do anything to them. Because if you do something to them, and let's say they die... You know, if a body to deal with. Or so take them as kin, folk. Yeah. Um, so you got to be careful about it. Kinfolk are born, not made. Yes, you would have, marvelous idea. You would have been kinfolk before you went through your first change. Not every kinfolk will go through their uh, through a first change. Now, technically, you were always a werewolf, but you would have been to most appearances a kinfolk before your first change. Need to make more kinfolk. That's... Much is kind of looking at him. It's like, um, I can't... He, he had a pep talk from Rat. Like, yeah, no. Um, be a gentleman. Others won't take kindly if you act in a way that would dishonor the bone norris. If you want, I can tell you one or two secrets. <laughs> I'm sure there's there's you know there's plenty of bone norris and folk around. Probably wouldn't might not be too difficult for you to uh, attract them. Find yourself a nice lady. There is definitely value in being honorably mated. But there's more than one strategy. There's enough bone or kinfolk walking around who don't have any... He'll, po- he'll be kind of gesturing towards the first... Who have no idea about what's going on. Let's keep it to honorably mated, shall we? So we don't have people who... Things happen. And then they go through the first change and not have a clue what's going on. Because then you're so having to be very disturbing. So, in short, if it keep track. So, you gotta keep a black book again, okay. <sighs> if you're going to jump around, know if there's anything growing out of that. Yeah. Well, myself and Eric are sometimes here at the forge. I said, if we, I'm not, you know, I was told to teach you, so you have to, but if I have the rest you want to learn how to do a metalworking, feel free to swing by during the day. If we, you pretty much have to. Yeah, well. 
And like I said, if you understand how the weapon's made, you're going to have a better understanding of it. You're going to be able to wield it better later on, and we'll do some practice with them. The others have their duties, and they'll attend to them as they see best. You see, you see best. Monty. Yeah. How good are you with those weapons? Pretty decent. You would have actually noticed um, when he was he was helping Robert. He's pretty good. He was obviously not going full tilt because when he's firing. Do you sort of practice wish? Mm, I need someone to teach me, actually. Okay. I've never had to deal with anything but the hands. Let's put um, it that way. Oh, well, and I could definitely use some training myself if you're up to it. Okay, what we should do is we should set aside some time in the future days where we all get together and practice anyone who's interested in it. We shouldn't be using the iron clothes the whole time because those things are still sharp. We can actually go about hitting each other if we make some, if make some wooden ones like kind of like a kendo, kendo sticks. Actually, I've got, um, I have some dulled practice blades uh, at my own forge that Perfect. I can bring over. Yeah, if we can get those going on, we can do the different things here, and um, everybody can. Start that said, they will still hurt, so you'll want to pull. At least when you're up against Monty, you'll want to pull. <laughs> yeah, I don't have... I can't turn... I can get, yeah. get way bigger and move at the speed of Tosh. That said, if Monty is okay with it, I can heal Monty if an accident happens. Well, if an accident happens, yes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the thing is... The thing about it is... You can't be afraid to get your hands dirty, but you think about all your actions before you take them. You, if you're going to enter a fight... I'll put you bluntly. If you're going to enter a fight... Win. Not only win, there is no reason you have to fight fair. Fighting fair oh, can no. get you killed. You fight smart. Fighting smart can sometimes... Is, and that doesn't mean that fighting smart isn't fighting fair. Fighting is sometimes it's best to fight fair, but you think about what you're doing. You think about different actions and the repercussions. And in this case, I'll sound out for the tribe. I assume you're part going to be part of. It's not guaranteed. Who knows? Maybe for some strange reason, some other tribe decides that you would make a fine something other than Bonor and try and recruit you. It's been... It happens. Occasionally. Like I said before, Mother Larissa led the Sept and she was a Bonor. Doesn't mean yeah. someday you can't lead the Sept. Yeah, uh, the, what I was going to say, Bonor style of fighting is quite simple. If you have to fight... Make sure that, that the opponent is going to regret uh, getting into that fight with you. Mm -hmm. And in because general... If you go to a fight, you're risking yourself. Not to mention everyone else around you. If first, what did he just say? Um, if I fight, I'm risking not only myself, but others. Okay, your mind's on something else. You shouldn't have dra uh, lagged that long. Pay attention. These people are giving up their time to teach you. They have a lot of experience. They've fought the kind of things you fought before. So if you want to be a big boy, Garu, then you need to listen to them because that could keep you alive. And You've been well, given... I'm... Yeah? well, I'm not of your tribe my tribe is generally considered by most to be the most martial-minded of all the tribes. When you fight, you fight to win, because this is a war, this is not... this is a war for survival, and not just of ourselves, but of the entire world. Uh, so, when you get in a fight, you fight to win. If you can't win, you fight to make sure that the next person has a better chance. One more day, one more minute. If that's all you can claw out, that's what you claw out. If you can't win the fight, you pick another fight and you take them down another day. You choose the battlefield. You be smart about it. Do it on the turf you understand and... Do it when you're best prepared. Yeah, that's just exactly. like if you're ambushing a different gang. Yeah, you do that's it exactly, exactly what Rob's doing. 
Robert's yeah, doing, yeah. I'm actually impressed with that. I haven't seen Nafroon think it going that particular route. He's taking him on a battlefield he understands. You choose the grounds. You lure them into it. You mess them up on your terms. Oh. Uh. Monty's going to say, Is gonna walk over to Monty's going to hand the sword to raise a swarm and kind of start giving advice on how to hold it and different things there, Clave. Just the best, you know, basically going through some of the basics of, you know, what way to hold it, what way to be positioning your body, things like that, and how to block it, that kind of thing. Just go over basic things. What were you saying at first? Generally, the newest guy is the one used as bait to instigate these attacks. Maybe. Not always in this case. There are not a lot of us, so if we're going to use someone for bait, we're going to use the person who is most likely to survive being bait. It's kind of like the military, but not exactly. Congratulations. You're not going to be bait because you're the newest guy. You're going to be bait because you're bone nor. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're a bone nor ragabash, congratulations. You're always bait. Uh... <laughs> As you might have noticed, uh, Monty's kind of like jerking the finger towards Raid the Swarm. As you might have noticed, bull norris can be really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, raids has some good basics on the dexterity side, but I actually don't have any dots, so he's a total beginner. Monty has a. Uh, He's got three dots in belief, so I'll... You actually might notice... Uh, do people want to make a perception alertness check? Sure. Uh, I'll just roll Monty's intelligence plus melee, basically, for instructing. Um, actually, I'll roll perception Not as good. He melee, seems to be distracted. Because... So. Actually, that, that I means... actually have melee. So I'll roll uh, perception plus two melee. Points that makes sense. Two, uh, two successes. I was explaining. And yeah, it's in melee to see up on what's going on. Well, instead of yeah, seeing what's the going on. Yeah. Anyone who succeeds, I say difficulty seven. Anybody so who succeeds that. notices nope. Monty's movements are a little bit slowed. Um, you actually you probably notice after a while Monty's wearing a Kevlar vest underneath his clothes. Hmm. Like. Hmm. Expecting to be shot? Preferably not, but um, better prepared. Yes, exactly. At all times, it's a bitch in the forge. I usually take it off when we're working, but uh, I'm trying to get used to keeping it on. You never know when somebody's gonna try something. Like shoot you with a sniper rifle with a silver bullet? Yeah, I don't think the cover kind of vest to do much in that particular circumstance, but uh, well, yeah. You know, in his case, it being silver might actually help him. Wait, no, silver's about the same softness as lead. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't, if it hits, if it's a bullet and it hits the armor, it'll help. Yep. Gives me a chance to get up close if needed. Preferably, I would like to avoid fights, but sooner or later, someone's going to try something. So I've never tried before. Mm. Actually, have any of you guys experienced um? It's a bit of deja vu lately. I feel a bit off. Other than that dream of back around the solstice, which was which was just before the storm. Okay, actually that's interesting because I haven't heard any of the other Garu talking about it, but I've heard um, other groups in the city, shall we say, mention it. Oh, wonderful. It's not not isolated, but um, it's certainly getting people wound up. So yeah, if it there's <coughs> heard talking about the leeches, there's the Fey. Fey are to a degree allies of the Garu, often enough, but it's not set in stone. You mean fairies? Yeah. Yes. Wings. No. No, Maybe. some of them 
There are... Some of them have been our enemies, some of them have been our friends, depending. I've heard them broadly categorized into two groups. There's goblins and elves. Elves are the pretty ones. I don't know how they'd feel about those terms. Just what somebody else referred to broken down as for me. Now, mostly I've just heard of the Alfar that are to be honored but not to be trusted. Hmm. And then, you know, there's the Fianna and their views, but... Um. The Fianna and the... You mean the crazy guys that drink in that building in the middle of the park? Yes. They big kin folk, yeah. The Fianna and, the F- and some of the Fae have... Um, they share a bit of heritage. You know, bloodlines cross there. So... Bit odd, but happens. Hmm. Um... Let's see, there's them. There's other Fira, which are kind of like other were creatures. Um, were cats, were ravens. The ones you're going to most come across are kind of the were ravens, were crows. The, uh, they're called Clorax. Really talkative. Good guys, though. Every are there so were often, rats? There um, were at one point. I know that much. I don't know if they're still around. I've heard. Of them, but I've never seen one. There's the Ananasi. There were sp- or spiders. Those guys. Ugh. Very clever. Very cunning. They deal with the triad in a very different way, from what I understand. Some of them seem to be allied to the different parts of the triad. Mm. Whereas you could broadly say that the Garu are allied with the wild. We're not actually. We're like to a degree. With Gaia. Yeah, but wild the wild is, just, is the wild, wild is, is pre- really the weakest part of yeah. the triad. So for the moment, once the balance can be readdressed. However, it's not really reasonable, so it's not something you can expect to be yeah. reliably on your side. I have heard of a guy talking about a time when he's had to fight beings of the wild once. It's happened before. You hear a lot more about the find the worm and the and the weaver. So, if the weaver is the weaker of our enemies, why aren't you uh, taking on the weaver? It's actually not. The weaver is the strongest of the triad right now. The weaver is order and organization and technology. And you just kind of like points towards uh. the buildings in the distance. So that's not exactly a small amount, is it? No. And when you when you looked out there, once you finished, you know, having a mild panic attack, which was actually completely acceptable response as a cub, um, you may have noticed a bunch of sort of silvery webs across everything. That is the work of the weaver. In the cities, the weaver is strong. The worm also tends to be strong because of pollution. Eric, and sorry, have you ever heard of the Silver Path? Uh, Silver Path? Yeah, no, it's, I haven't found anybody heard of it. A, um, a fae mentioned it before. Uh, yeah, I declined politely. Seemed like a good idea mm. at the time. I've heard... That's true. There's a silver thread that some can use to tra- trace their way back to the gauntlet. Useful gift, that. I've never heard of a you silver mean like path. The thread that that uh, hero used in the Minotaur thing. No, like no, 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 not, not, that's, that was just, um, similar concept, much different situation. Uh, this is more like uh, if you've ever heard stories of uh, astral projection, it's something like that. Yeah. I used to look up that stuff before I changed. It was interesting. Uh, right now, I so wish that my character played D&D, he would understand exactly <laughs> what you're saying. 
It's Labyrinths and Lamia. Labyrinths and Lamia. Ah, yes. Labyrinths and Lamia. <laughs> By the, uh, the mages of the bay. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot for you to learn, but I think the most important thing is for you to think about your actions and what effects they could cause. Because you might be able to avoid fights, or if a fight has to happen, you might be able to make sure it's on terms that are more favorable to you. This is in, in all things. As I said, there's obviously there's Spotlight who uses Fang and Claw, there's Robert who uses his financial abilities, all these. You can learn to use many weapons. And you should know as many weapons as you can, because each situation is different. Exactly. Exactly. You gotta appraise the situation, pick up the right tool for a job. Just like fixing a car, you don't use the same, the exact same tool for every single situation. You use a multitude of them for the right task at hand. Mm. I've actually seen a few guys only use a hammer to fix stuff. Well, yeah, you can use the wrong tool vigorously, and that that might fix it. <laughs> Maybe Robert's financial skills work out quite well, but you just went in there and you intimidated the hell out of some guy. Maybe use your financial skills if you can learn some. <laughs> no, the thing is, if you use the financial skills, they won't even know who did it. Yeah. Or at least they won't know it's werewolves that did it. Or if you go to the thing is you don't you're not in this alone. There's others around who can help. There's myself, there's the guys here, there's the other Garu of the Sept. If you have a problem that you think might be able to be solved with some of your computer skills, if you contact um Glasspaw or Leash, they might be able to help in that regard. The Glasswalkers are Scarily good with computers. Yes. <laughs> I think I was present that mood where the Alpha of the Sep made an appearance in. You mean like how he can disappear through phones? I mean like making a silver tank think the Phone they turned off is ringing. Hmm. Hmm. I remember yeah. that. We're not supposed to talk unless we have the talky stick. Mm hmm. Yes. The something. Martin uh, lies having no idea. E easy, easy explanation here. here. You're a cop. Don't talk to unless you're being addressed. Yes. But what's going to happen here is you're going to learn, you're going to get advice off people, you're going to listen to it, you're going to think about why they've told it to you. Everybody's got an agenda, everybody's trying to work an angle. You've got to make your own mind up about this stuff at the end of the day, but that doesn't mean, even if somebody's giving you advice you don't necessarily agree with, still listen to it. You don't have to necessarily follow it. Although the guys are going to be giving you some solid basic stuff here. Actually, since you're uh, in that scene, think about gangs and how they operate in the nation of gangs. If Gaia went off, she when Gaia went off, she made five different auspices. If you think about that for a second, that means no one Garu can do everything. You've got to work as a group, you work as a pack, you work as a sept, you work as a nation. So, cooperating with others, you can achieve a lot more. Hmm. Because no Another one thing. can do everything. Another thing to remember is this. We are all warriors, but the auspice gives us additional tasks. As the Arun... Yes, you are you are the warriors, but you that also means you're supposed to be the leaders in war. The Galliards, they are the storytellers. They're the ones who sing our tales of glory, honor, and wisdom, which uh, really does matter. You've got um, the Philodox, like uh, Raids the Swarm. 
There are they are our judges, our lawyers, our prosecutors. They're the keepers of the law. You have the theurges like me. We are the shamans. We are the ones that deal with the spirits. Then you have the ragabash. They are the tricksters, the lateral thinkers, the ones who come up with ideas no one else would think of. Or at least, you know, no one, you know, if they do think of it, they're not going to bring it up because they're not the ragabash. So wait a second. We come up with a good idea, but it's outside the box. We can't oh no, if bring you, it up. If you come up with a good idea that's outside the box, you bring it to the ragabash. And since they have a lot more experience thinking outside the box, they tell you if it's a good idea or not. Ah. Or at the very least, whether or not it's worth trying. But in the end, all the ideas are brought to the alpha. And if the alpha goes with it, then you go with it. Mm. If they don't, well, then you don't. But if it's not, if you're not in a war situation and you think you should go with it and you think you can beat the alpha in a challenge, you can challenge the alpha. Not yet you, because you're still a cub, but in principle. Great questions? Lots. But, uh... When you ask a question... Think about how the person's likely to respond to it, and choose your words well. You're trying to take get me to take one dot of etiquette. I know you. Possibly. <laughs> like I said before, you don't ask somebody, are you a metis? You ask them what breed they are. They can't get offended if you ask what breed. They could be a lupus. They could be a homid. Most won't take offense at that. Do never ask a red talon if they're a homid. Actually, that's another reason. You all, always just ask what breed they are. Yes. You just always ask what breed, because you can't get offended at that. Or just ask, you know, ask them to introduce themselves. Exactly. Usually, we'll introduce ourselves with our name, our tribe, our breed and auspice. So, let's have you ask a question. Sorry about that. Real life stuff. No problem. So, actually, don't even ask a question. Just introduce yourself. Um, I'm Jose Ifrit Alvarez. I am a Hamid Arun Bonoy. Say it again. I am Jose Ifrit Alvarez. Ahmed Arun Bonor? Why are you hesitating? You are or you aren't. Say it again. Because I have a nickname, but I've been told that there's deed names, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say my nickname or if I'm supposed to leave that out. Drop it. Go with, drop it or keep it. Pick one or, one or the, the other. other. I'm Jose Alvarez. Jose Ifrit Alvarez, Hamid Arun Bonor. All right. Time. Confidence. Say it again, one more time with confidence. One second. Okay. Oh, is he getting annoyed? <laughs> um. That's actually said. Use that. Get angry. Get angry. <laughs> He's, he's obviously getting God a little damn it, I'm Jose Efren Alvarez, Hamid, Aaron, Bonor. God damn it. Sounds like you meant it. So when they ask you, maybe not as angry, but you say it with confidence because that's who you are and what you are. Mm -hmm. Don't give a fuck if there's somebody who goes, oh, they're Bonors, whatever. Fuck them. You are what you are. You are who you are. And for the record... You still have one of the best explanations ever to make little mistakes. You're a cop. You're allowed to make mistakes and learn from them. Oh. Hmm. 
Then again, Philodox, that you just made a mistake and didn't know. And getting caught, uh, you knew you were doing a mistake or should have known. Not necessarily the best of ideas. If you're not sure, ask. Preferably discreetly, depending on the subject matter. <laughs> If you are certain you're right, double even, check. <laughs> even when you make it to Clias, the guys are going to know you recently got there, so discreetly ask them off to the side if you don't understand something. If you keep asking them, that shows you're not paying attention, they're probably going to start getting annoyed. Okay. Um, will we leave the scene there? Yeah. Sure. Yeah.